So we will now look at the Knuth Morris Pratt algorithm for string matching. So what we said last time was that if we can pre-process our string into this automaton which remembers the longest prefix match at every stage. So if I have a prefix match up to a particular letter and if I read a letter, what will be the new prefix that matches? So if we have such an automaton, right, the state i denotes the match up to p of i and the transition tells us how this match gets updated if I read a letter a at i. Then we can do this in one scan of our text by starting at the initial state, following this automaton letter by letter and seeing if we reach the final state or not. Right? So with a single scan of our text, we can find this pattern. So the knuth morris pratt algorithm is essentially to compute this automaton efficiently. So remember we said that we only need to look at the last m letters of the text we are scanning to decide and effectively we are really looking at the last m letters of the pattern. Right? We have to match the pattern with itself. If we have matched a certain part of the pattern and the next thing does not match, then where back in the pattern are we? So what the knuth morris pratt algorithm says is that you actually match p against p itself. Right? And it computes this function match which is defined as follows, match of a position j. So j is going to be between 0 and m minus 1, the positions in my string. The match of 0 of, of, of j is going to be the number k. If the suffix, the longest suffix, if I take my thing here, right, so this is my pattern and if I take a j, right, so then if I take 0 to j, so the string from 0 to j is going to be 0 to j plus 1 written as this way in a slice. The string from 0 to j, okay, has a suffix, oops, has a suffix which corresponds to the prefix 0 to k minus 1. So if I go from 0 to k minus 1 in my pattern and if I look at this word, it is the same as this word. So that is what match says. So match of j says that if I look at the letters from 0 to j, then the last k letters of this match the first k letters of my string, the string from 0 to k minus 1, the prefix from 0 to k minus 1. So this is what I want to try and compute in this knuth morris pratt algorithm. So let us assume that we have done it up to j. Right? So now we want to compute what happens at j plus 1. Right? So we have computed match of j and match of j is some k. Right? So this is from 0 to k minus 1 and this is from 0 to j. Right? So match of j is k means that there is a segment of length k here which matches a segment of length k here. Now I want to extend it. So the good case is that this is actually equal to this. Right? If this is equal to this, then I will just extend the match. Then I will say that if match of j was equal to k, then match of j plus 1 is going to be equal to k plus 1, no problem. But what happens if these do not match? Right? So if I have some letter here which is different from some letter here which we have indicated by saying they are of different colors. Then our goal is to try and find some prefix here which may not be the longest prefix. It might be a shorter suffix such that if I take this shorter suffix, so if I read off these letters here, then if I look, I will hopefully find an extension here. I will find this orange extension, right? So let me draw this here. So then I will find an orange block here, right? So this is what we are trying to find. So we are trying to find a shorter suffix which matches a shorter prefix, but this orange letter happens here. So I can extend the blue suffix by orange and I can expand the corresponding blue prefix by orange. Right? So this is what we are trying to do. So although we have called it match, in the literature this is usually called the failure function. So the failure function has a natural interpretation which is that if I fail to match here, where should I step back and try again? Right? So if the match currently fails, then it means that the current prefix which I have built up does not extend anymore. So what is the best prefix that I can fall back to after this? So that is what failure is computing. Right? So it is exactly what we said for match. We will just use the word fail instead of match henceforth. So we want to be able to compute this quantity. So this is how Knuth, Morris and Pratt 
suggest that we do this. So we initialize this failure to be zero, which means that remember we had in that automaton that we built by hand, we said that if we see a letter C, which is not at the end of the pattern at any point, then we will go back and reset our prefix that is matched to the empty prefix. So that is a default assumption that at any point, if I don't find a valid extension, then I will fall back to the empty prefix. So I will just initialize this fail. So this fail is just now a, a function which tells me for every position from 0 to m minus 1, it tells me what will be the, remember that definition, right? So fail of j or match of j is the longest suffix of the first j letters which matches the first k letters, right, if it is equal to k. So the default is it's 0. So now I am going to run through this. So I am going to use j to walk through this sequence and I am going to use k to keep track of the latest uh, prefix I have seen so far. So k will keep track of the current match and j will keep track of the next position which I am trying to update. So in our previous picture, right, so k is this value and j is telling me where I am trying to update in this picture. So as we said before, if the value at position j matches the pattern at position k, so I have this prefix up to k minus 1 because I have the value k, I have matched k letters, so 0 to k minus 1 matches 0 to j, right, or 0 to j minus 1 rather because I am trying to update the value at j. So I have matched up to, so I know that in some sense the fail of j minus 1 is equal to k, that is what I tell you. And now you want to tell me what is fail of j. So I said that if this is equal to this, the next position is equal, then I can say fail of j is k plus 1, I increment both, right. On the other hand, if it is not, then I have to find that longest suffix. But how can I do that? Well, I go back here, right, it is effectively going back here and asking where should I go backwards. So I take the longest suffix that matches this prefix. Notice that this prefix does not include the letter that I had before, right. So I take in some sense a shorter uh, prefix, right, so I take this prefix up to here, right, and then I look for the longest prefix uh, suffix there. So that takes me backwards and then I try again. If it does not match, again I go backwards. I keep going backwards so long as I do not hit 0, right. Once I hit 0, then I just give up and say j equal to j plus 1. If I find it before I hit 0, then at that position I will extend it, right. So this is how it works. So I go backwards and I try to find a shorter prefix that matches. If I do find a shorter prefix, so I go backwards without incrementing j. So I am still looking at the same j, right. So I fixed a j, it had a mismatch. I try to find a shorter prefix which matches, so I go backwards, right. So I find a shorter prefix, check if it matches. So if I can extend that and it is equal to the j I am looking at now. Otherwise I go backwards again. So there are two situations, one is I do find it, in which case at that position this loop takes over and I get a new value of k. So, so k is going up and down. So k was set at something and I am now resetting it backwards. j is the one that is going forward position by position. j starts at 0 and goes to m minus 1. j never goes backwards. So I am one by one I am setting j values, but each time I might reduce the prefix that has matched because I found a mismatch. And if the prefix does not match at all, then it goes back to 0 and I just leave, notice when I just increment j on its own, I do not touch it, which means that it has this default value that I set initially, it remains 0. So 0 is already set, I do not have to set it. On the other hand, if it is some non-trivial value, it will get set here. Right? If I do find a prefix whose extension matches t of j, p of j, then I will set it here and I will proceed. So this is how this knuth morris pratt algorithm computes this failure function or what we call the match function in one scan from left to right. right? So how long does this take? So the claim was that the earlier thing that we were doing when we were explicitly calculating the edges in the automaton was taking a long time, it was taking order m cube times the size of sigma. And we wanted to claim that this thing actually takes time proportional to m. So how do we show that this takes time proportional to m? So it's a little bit tricky, okay. So one thing is very clear that j steps through 0, 1, 2 and it never goes backwards. So j is going to start from 1 and go to m minus 1, 
right. So, inside this while loop j starts at 1 and goes up to m minus 1. So, j gets incremented m minus 1 time. So, there are m minus 1 iterations where j gets incremented. But the problem is there are some iterations like this one where the while loop iterates and decrements k without incrementing j, right. We have iterations where k reduces and j is unchanged. So, not every iteration of the while loop makes progress with respect to j. I know that j can move forward only m minus 1 times. But what about the remaining times when it is doing nothing? How many times is k going backwards? Because unless we can bound that, we cannot claim that overall this thing takes time order n. Okay. But there is a very simple observation that you cannot reduce k more times than you increase k. So, k starts at 0. There are some iterations where k goes up by 1 and there are some iterations where k goes down because the failure function always takes you to the left. But you cannot go left beyond what you have gone right, right. So, the total number of times you decrease k cannot be more than the total number of times you increase k. Right? If k does not increase for every time you go down, you must have a matching going up. But the matching going up happens only in one place where I do k equal to k plus 1. So, unless I have a k equal to k plus 1, I cannot keep doing failure k because I will be at 0 and this thing will, will not trigger the decre decrement. So, I have to now see whether I can control how many times k increases and if that tells me something, then it will tell me how many times k can decrease across all the iterations. But notice that k is incremented only when j is incremented. So, every time k is incremented, j is also incremented, but we already saw that j increments at most m minus 1 times. So, k can also increment at most m minus 1, can be fewer because sometimes j might go ahead without incrementing k. But certainly every time k goes up, j goes up. And since j cannot go up more than m minus 1 times, k cannot go up more than 1 m minus 1 times. If it cannot go up more than m minus 1 times, it cannot go down more than m minus 1 times. Right? So, this is a very careful and clever example of this amortized analysis. I cannot promise you that for a given j, how many times k goes down, but across all the iterations of the loop, I can tell you that j goes up at most m minus 1 times and therefore, k goes down at most m minus 1 times. So, between them, they have at most 2 m iterations of the loop. So, the number of iterations of this loop is order m, right, which is what I want. So, this is a dramatic improvement, right. So, when we did this naive calculation with the graph based automaton, we were effectively computing this failure function, but we were doing this complicated thing of looking at every suffix and scanning it and comparing it to every prefix for every letter. And therefore, we were getting this order m cubed times size of sigma. Whereas here, we have simplified it to order m overall. So, now that we have the failure function, the actual string matching is very similar to that uh, automaton based thing. So, you scan t in one scan from the beginning to the end, right. So, j is the position that we are looking at in our string text and k is the indication of how, how many match. So, it is a state in our automaton or it is how many positions we have matched so far, right. So, every time I see an extension that is I am looking at position j in my text and my next position in my string, I have already matched 0 to k minus 1. So, I have matched k positions. So, 0 to k minus 1 has already matched. The next one matches, then I proceed. And if I have matched up to position m minus 1, right, if k reaches m minus 1, that means I have matched from 0 to m minus 1, the first m minus 1, uh, the first m characters, right. So, that means that I can return this particular value. So, the particular value I have is j minus m plus 1, which is the current i where I found a match, right. So, this is just exiting with the first match. So, it is returning. So, I am exiting at the position where I have a match. Otherwise, if I have found an equality, but I have not finished matching, then I will just increment j and k exactly as we did before. So, I am just saying that my match has progressed. I have increased my prefix match by 1 and I have moved to the next position. Otherwise, like before, we will say that this was not a match, right. So, this is not equal to. So, I will try to compute the best prefix that I have for this letter. Now, this as we said could take repeated decrements, but it will be the same as before, right. So, if, if it is not equal to, 
I have to update this prefix exactly as we did when we computed the failure function. But here we are using the failure function which is already given to us. We do not have to recompute it. We are just computing the failure function as it is given to us, right. So, the failure function remember is given to us. So, we have basically called that earlier function and stored it in this array fail. And then as before, if we find that the prefix is completely vacuous, then I will just increment my position and not do anything. So, at the end, if I have not exited, right, if I have not exited and I reach the end of this while loop, that means at no point in my text did I reach the final state of my automaton, did I reach the fact that I have matched all m positions in my pattern. In this case, I must report that there is no match, so I will return minus 1, right. So, this particular thing is very explicit like we said before, just to simplify the way it works, it only reports the first match. Now, if you want to do the next match, then you have to take this value and restart KMP at that point, right. So, so we will not bother about that. So, the complexity of this is again going to be order n plus m for the same reason that this loop, right, is going to take n steps for j, but we also said before that we have this k going down, right, and so it is going to be order n actually. So, we have an order n algorithm for matching assuming we have the fail, failure function and the failure function took order m, right. So, so therefore, now we have this algorithm in one place now, this Knuth Morris, Morris Pratt algorithm, KMP as it is called, right. It computes the failure function first in time order m and after pre processing, right, it can check the matches in order n plus m time, right. And overall, this KMP algorithm works in time order n plus m. So, in principle, this is the best that you can do in case of worst case complexity, right. In the worst case complexity of string matching, we have to read every letter in our string and we have to read every letter in our pattern, right. You cannot do anything better than that. So, order n plus m just says that we are taking enough time to read our entire text and our entire pattern and then make a decision about where the first match is. So, you cannot hope to better this in the worst case. So, asymptotically this is the best algorithm that you can come up with. But as we have seen though Boyer-Moore has a much worse complexity in the worst case, remember it was order m times n, right. In practice because you skip over you actually do not have to see the entire text. So, when you see mismatches you can actually jump ahead and that turns out to be in a sense more productive than keeping track of the optimum match and doing it in this linear time. So, we said before that Boyer-Moore is often act actually used in practice because in real occurring text the benefit that you get from that heuristic skipping overcomes this m plus n thing. So, as we said the Unix utility grep for instance uses Boyer-Moore and so do many other uh, utilities which have a built in search function. So, string matching, so it is a little bit like if you go back to the situation of sorting. So, we said that quick sort in general has a, the naive implementation of quick sort has an order n squared behavior, but in an average case it actually is n log n and because of other reasons it is very fast. So, many built in sorting functions use quick sort even though it is not theoretically optimum. So, similarly here though this KMP algorithm is theoretically optimum, it in practice very often the suboptimal boyer more algorithm which has a worst case completely much worse than KMP works out to be better in practice and that is what is used. Okay. 